Let's paint a sea scene. So the first thing we need to do is the sky. So I'm beginning with red. It's a little bit tinted with blue, that's okay. And I'm going to do some sweeping strokes across here. So I'm doing fairly quick brush strokes because I want little gaps of white for where the sun will be and my sun's going to be roughly around about here. I'm also going to continue down and this will be the sea here. So you have to try and do this quickly, as quickly as possible. With the sea area, I don't mind going the other way too. There we go. And I might do a little bit of a stronger red just here. Now I feel this is drying out pretty quickly so I'm just spraying above and that will give me a little bit more time. Now I'm mixing up a purple mix I'm using some paint that's already on my palette and here we go. So this isn't too strong a mix but you don't want it to be too watery because if it is then it's just going to um, spread out. and we don't really want that. Okay, I need more purple mix and here we go. And finally, just want a stronger mix. <clears throat> and uh, dab that on the rag, just to get rid of excess water. we go. And here too. Maybe one more at the bottom.
yeah I think that's looking pretty good I might do a line here and as you can see the paper is dry here and it gives this dry brush effect which can look quite nice actually and just here sorry about my voice it's uh, just humid in Japan and um, it suddenly affected my voice yeah there we go and what we can do is if we have enough time we might not get some tissue fold it up and then sweep across oh and there that looks nice and here too sweep across you have to be careful with this technique you can soon ruin your painting and an important point is you soon get paint on the tissue maybe if you do it two possibly three times you can get away with it but if you're not careful this paint will once again go back onto the paper and give you a muddy effect which you don't want normally so you have to find a clean bit again by refolding and then redo you see if I look now there's not much paint on that so I could use that again and still not too bad but do be careful with this technique it can destroy your painting very quickly there we go we finished this guy let's leave that to dry now now let's paint an island in the background so tone is very important as this is in the background it's important not to make it too strong at the same time I don't want it to be too light either so it's not going to be blue it's going to be more purple and a quite watery mix thicker than this though I think okay I think that will do maybe a little bit more bluer okay let's see what happens here we go so about here and then we've got a bit coming up here now I did want this to come up higher but because it's quite a weak mix I don't want it going over this cloud layer because it's going the cloud is going to show through because this is too transparent so really I shouldn't have made the um, the clouds so low I made them too low now I'm going to have a land mass here so I don't really want to paint there because watercolor is fairly transparent and although the things in the foreground are going to be like much thicker thicker mixes I think you're still going to maybe get something showing through so that's not ideal so what I'm going to do here yeah I like that is um, clean my brush dry it it's very important to dry it if it's very watery you'll get a horrible run and then I'm just going to do this and this might even give a little suggestion of mist which could be nice and 
quickly. I'm not too worried about this being perfect because it's all, most of it's going to be hidden. And I went wrong there, so quickly get tissue and wipe it up. The quicker you are, the sooner, the, the more, the better you can completely wipe it up. And once again, okay, what I'm going to have to do, because I keep getting this wrong, is get closer to the paper and get my fingers closer to the tip of the brush. This gives me more control. Okay, there we go. I just wanted to give a suggestion of shadow to make it look more like um, that it's not just sticking on the paper, but it's actually, actually more, how can I say, not just stuck on, but actually seems to be in the painting. So there we go. Um, I think what I'll do now is I'm going to have an island here and an island here. So now I'm going to do some um, sea texture. So this is going to be a slightly purplish mix and I want to dry it on here to get rid of too much water and I think that will work now but really I should test this out on scrap paper but I'll take the risk. So it has to be a quick stroke across to get the dry brush effect. Here we go. So the first stroke wasn't so great but good enough and we can go the other way. And of course the more I do these brush strokes the drier the brush gets and the easier it is to make this effect until the brush gets too dry and I'll have to put it the brush back in the mixture. Okay now what I'm doing here is very dangerous but I wanted to get this straighter because if I do too much of this I'll get rid of all the little lovely white gaps but I think that's it we've done it. Now let's leave this to dry. Now I'm going to paint an island here and um, this is going to be the focal point of the painting and um, it's going to be a fairly strong mix so a little bit bluer and here we go actually bit more. It's um, good to spend time getting exactly the right mix. Okay so it's going to go across here so we have to think about how long from here to here and about this high. So here we go. Yep and then little bit of rock there and then the basic shape of this is this kind of shape it's a bit of a strange shape but this is why I like it and here we've got a few big rocks they looked a bit too regular there there we go like that and then this is the tricky bit. We're going to use the liner and then we're going to have a flicky effect like that.
and it's drying out very quickly so I'm just going to spray it and before it dries at the bottom I just want to do a few little marks to indicate shadows and try and keep this wet here because I'm going to do a reflection in a minute but quickly I want to do this okay I've spread the hairs out there we go now it's given me the kind of mark I was hoping for just have to try and spread these hairs out a bit and then you get that lovely fir tree shape hmm and spray again So I'm not amazingly happy with that but it's good enough and then at the bottom here we want this reflection so this continues but it's only a partial reflection it goes down just a little and then it stops so wash the brush out wipe it you want it to be pretty dry, dry. and then we're going to start at the bottom and we're just going to go up and touch the bottom of this and then it's going to hopefully come down yep actually not too bad and I might just get my liner and do a few lines across The paper should be fairly wet and that should be soft. Then I'm going to rinse out this liner, wipe it and do a few lines here. Then let's leave that to dry and then we're going to do a foreground island here that's going to frame the whole picture. Let's begin doing this foreground island now one of the most difficult things is that this foreground island has fir trees on it and we need to make sure that they are high I've made the mistake several times now of doing them too low so the first thing I need to think about is just how high they will come and it will be about here so I'm going to get my liner brush and right from the beginning I want to get the right height now I'm even going to use my hake brush 
for these fir trees and I'm really squeezing down, pressing down on the brush and scrunching up the hairs and then here we go there we go a little bit more redder mix and the hairs keep trying to come together so it, it is a it is a struggle actually you are fighting almost with your brush here the hairs want to come together and you need to try and keep the hairs apart because that's what gives you this interesting texture that makes it look like a tree and if you can do a quick stroke as I did just then that's nice but it takes a bit of courage and there's more chance of making a mistake there we go so I might just get my liner and strengthen that and also try and show a few branches quickly spray it because it's rapidly drying out okay and then down here we're going to have rocks so if possible I want to make the mix even stronger not sure if I've achieved that but I've tried and um, I'm not sure I wanted these two shapes connecting but maybe that's okay now I want to do these rocks pretty quickly because I want to scrape out highlights in them I've also got some rocks here these will dry out very very quickly so I am really working hard now to get this done as quickly as possible there we go So this one is short and this one is longer. That's important. It, it looks it looks better. Um, aesthetics. And let's check. Yep. Yep. Perfect. The timing of this is so important. So I'm doing sometimes thin strokes and sometimes thick strokes. On the top, I tend to do a thick stroke like that and then down by the side a thin stroke be careful you don't you'll carry paint on your finger so be careful you don't stick your finger above the rock and touch the paper because you'll do that and mark it a little isn't so bad but just be careful and this is looking very good actually where the paper is wetter like here you might have to wait a little or just press down much more firmly but if it is too wet these marks will just disappear and that means the paper the paint is too wet and if you don't get any mark whatsoever it means you've missed it <laughs> and you'll have to let it dry completely and then paint it again and try 
so it, it takes practice okay and now I'm doing just reflections so I'm just trying to suggest and uh, I've run out of paper here so uh, so it's not so important here I probably probably should have had this whole thing up higher so I think I made a mistake here well with the sky the sky should have come down to about here this cloud and then this should have been higher and then this and then this and then I would have shown some of the reflections of this big island here but um, I'll show my previous painting and you can have a look and that one I think looks better but I'm happy with this painting it's a good painting and maybe it's even a bit easier than the other one because you don't have to worry about reflections right in the foreground but there there we go finished I might just do a dry brush stroke across here shall we try it so remember it has to be quick the mixture has to be fairly dry and really you should do it on rough paper first not rough paper scrap paper oh not bad now if you go over it be super careful yeah and there we go I think that worked a treat that that worked well and um, I might just do a little bit of playing around with this but you really have to be careful not to do too much of this it, it, um, it becomes very um, fun and you can't stop and then you end up doing too much so final thing let's do three birds over here or actually we might do them here because this will give more attention to our focal point which is this island there we go and then one more I'm just being careful that there's no paint on my hands and there we go these birds lead us to this island perhaps ideally this island should be a bit more over here in this area but still it looks very good so please have a go and have fun happy painting